welcome to Skip E. Low Looks at Hollywood. Today's guests on the show are one of Hollywood's great beauties, as you've seen her in Rhapsody in Blues, Sergeant York, and Yankee Doodle Dan, the beautiful Miss Joan Lindsay. Also appearing on the show are two of Hollywood's great columnist sons, Sheila Graham's son, Robert Westbrook, and James Bacon's son, Roger Bacon. And here he is, man of the half hour, Skip E. Low. Joan Leslie. <laughs> How are you, my darling? Hi, I'm Skip. Nice to see you. It's nice seeing you. What is new and exciting in Joan Leslie's life right oh, now? Oh, I am so pleased to tell you. I've got a wonderful role in Robert Conrad's new movie of the week. Uh-huh. You know, I've been a fan of his for so long. I think he is just an incredible actor uh -huh. and personality. Right. And I heard that he sort of likes my work, too, and I'm tickled to death. I'm playing his mother in this marvelous new show. It was all shot in Florida last uh -huh. year. Uh -huh. It's coming out very soon now. It's a movie of the week? Yes. And it opens next On ABC, uh -huh. uh, uh, April 5th. April 5th. Mm -hmm. Ah, great. Uh, That's on a Saturday night. Yes, it is. Ah. Yeah. So you're a busy lady and married. How long have you been married, Joni? Let me see. A long We've time. We've had a wedding anniversary. I think it's 35. How about that? 35 years? Yeah. Joan, let's Am I not so lucky? You're I'm lucky in so many ways. I can't begin to tell you. You seem very happy. I am. Tell me something. How many children do you have? We have twin daughters. Oh. That's all. Really? But they're wonderful. Are they in the business? Or? No, not at all. Uh -huh. No, they're both professors of English literature at Deep Place, and they're both at um, universities uh -huh. out of state, unfortunately for us. Where, but they where? come back to California yeah, every summer. Where are they? One teaches at Vanderbilt University in Tennessee, uh -huh. and the other one is in eastern New Mexico U. They just love Tell it. me it's about the days at Warner Brothers. I got to know those yeah. wonderful days. James yeah, yeah. Cagney. Yes, oh. wonderful memories. I yeah, tell me about you. those days. Rose Mary DeCamp. I just had her in my show just a she few weeks ago, David, involved. was it? Right. And she she's was a just lady. a lovely lady. She is. She's just a great lady. You did a wonderful movie with her. Wonderful actress. Two, at Two? least three, maybe. Really? Of course, Yankee Doodle is the one we all remember so very well. Yankee it's, Doodle It's Dan like Doodle. old home week. All you have to do is, <laughs> is mention the name and we say, aww. <laughs> like that, you know. Uh -huh. There's something about the period, there's something about the music, and there's certainly something about that Cagney family that will not be denied. He is such Isn't a Isn't he wonderful? I love him. Great yeah. actor. Yeah. And Jeannie played his sister in it, you know, uh -huh. and Bill, his uh -huh. brother, produced it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, his brother did produce it. Yes. I see. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hal Wallace is the executive producer, uh -huh. but he, uh, Bill was on the set every day, helping with every bit of rewriting and everything that uh -huh. happened. A lot of people don't know that Joan Wesley did a lot of musicals. They think you did a Isn't lot. Isn't that funny? You, uh -huh. you did a lot of musicals. Well, you know, you know, I started out as a dancer, and I loved to dance, That's and I right. enjoy it very much. I danced, of course, with Jimmy in the picture. That was great fun, a little waltz clog or something. Uh -huh. I danced with Fred Astaire. You now certainly did. We're not going to forget and that. And that sky, <laughs> that was sky. The sky's the limit. Sky's the uh -huh, limit. Uh -huh. I nearly worked with him on Holiday Inn, but Warner's wouldn't loan me for that. They uh -huh. had something else going on. Mm -hmm. So when he had this opportunity over at RKO uh -huh. to say who he would like, he asked for me, and I was tickled uh, to death. He asked for you? Yes. How nice. Oh, it was marvelous because uh -huh. I always saw his pictures, you know, uh -huh. back in Detroit when I was growing That's up. That's right. You uh, are from Detroit. He's you were a little dancer, a little girl, I understand. Oh, yes, yes. Traveling around, and mm -hmm. then Charles Kukar. What happened back? Tell me about that. He you mean my beginning? Yes, you're beginning. Charles Kukar. No, 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 no. You know, uh, we all took singing and dancing in in our family. Mm -hmm. My two sisters and I, and we were on the stage. Vaudeville, if you please. Imagine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, what was the name of the we act? Travel. The of the oh, act? just the Brodell just sisters. You mean you haven't heard of them? <laughs> 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 no, I'm afraid only around Detroit. You know, you might have heard of that. But um, when we got to New York, uh, there were there was an MGM talent scout in the audience one time, and uh, he saw me. I was signed to an MGM contract, but they dropped me again. Then my sister Mary. She was signed to a contract. Both my sisters are beautiful and talented. Mm -hmm. and Betty has a beautiful singing voice, and Mary is just gorgeous. Uh -huh. She was signed to Universal. Uh -huh. And um, when she came out here, she kept telling them, you should have Joan here, too. She'd be all in all these Deanna Durbin pictures that uh -huh. she was out here. Uh -huh. So I finally came out, got a few parts, and then Warner signed me. Warner signed you? Yes. But I thought George Kukar caught you. In. No, yeah. I, I worked. When I was at MGM, I, I was in Camille. Ah, that's right. You did. A, you had a small part in Camille. I had a very small part in Camille. Did you really? But it was just great to, uh -huh. you know, get the feeling of that enormous, marvelous studio uh -huh. and 
see Tukor in action and see Greta Garbo. Yes. Which I did. You did, Mary Lou. Mm -hmm. That was taken in 1936, Joan. Was it? Yes, 1936. Good God. But you know, my days. favorite row was the, the one you did with Humphrey Bogard. Wasn't that a marvelous <sighs> stroke of luck for me? Well, the studio was being very kind indeed. How did you get that luck? That is really luck. Well, we tested. You know, everybody tested. Everyone that was under contract tested in those days. They had right. the, the money to do that. But um, I think the, the studio really was on the build-up with me. And uh, I, I remember testing with, with Bogey, right. tested with me. And Raul right. Walsh directed it. And uh, I, I won the role, and I was, I was way wonderful. over my head, as a matter of fact. And I, I wish later I could have had another chance at it. It was a great role. He was so great in it. And I Lupino, you remember? Yes, from one of my favorite actors. He set a style for villains in that picture that uh, he did, made a he? difference. He made did, a difference he? in the industry. Yeah. Uh -huh. You see Elspie, I Lupino? I, I did see her a year or so ago. She was lovely. Yeah, she's she looks very, very nice. Yeah. I wish she were still directing. She's yes. a very good director. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What's your favorite of all your films? I have to say Yankee Doodle. It's What's just there's too much about it that's great remembering, you mm. know, with Mike Curtiz directing and uh, um, Richard Wharf and Walter Houston, and, but particularly Jimmy. He rewrote almost every scene, you know, he in did. the story to make it more vaudeville, more real. I don't know, he just had a marvelous feeling for uh -huh. that era. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, Mike Curtiz would say, whatever you say, Jimmy, you go ahead, you do it. Uh -huh. When Jimmy did the scene where Walter Houston dies, remember, and right, he's hovering over his bed, right. and Walter dies. Jimmy cried on every single take, and it was so emotional that everyone on that set cried. Mike uh -huh. Curtis spoiled two takes crying. He the did. fellas up here, the tears were splashing down. Oh. It's something about when a tough guy uh -huh. cries, it's very, very moving. Yes, it is. But By you know, the way, Yankee wait till you see Conrad in this. He's good. He's so, yeah. he's so We're wonderful. getting back to that one. All right. But Yankee right. Doodle Dandy, I want to stick it. Yeah. Yankee Doodle right. Dandy, they shot that the day after Pearl Harbor was yeah. attacked. That's right. Is that right? That's right. Rosemary DeCamp said that, didn't she? She said it was just, it was just. How did you feel about that, Mary Lou? You know, we were in war, Pearl Harbor. Indeed, we know. were. And, and the you president's voice came over the radio. And told us we were at war that infamous day, you know. Right. And uh, Jimmy said, "Did she tell you all yes, this?" Yes, she did. Go ahead. How no, we no. asked for a prayer yeah. on no, the set. No, she did not. No, she did not. He she did. Didn't say that. Not he that. said, "I think a prayer is in order, right here." And there was silence. And James everybody, did. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. They stopped for a second, and then Mike said, "Okay, now let's really turn out a really good movie." You know, oh. we, we had a feeling then that. We were really part of the, the war effort. Yes. I think we in the picture business felt that. I think our studio felt that. Mm -hmm. We had bunting all over the place. We were selling war bonds. We were raising funds for USO. Uh -huh. And we were turning out musicals that didn't hurt the war effort no. at all, if no. I may say so. It did so. not, no. And that was certainly one of them. Yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, I loved it. Sergeant York, how yes. about that? Yes. Well, a That's superb a great movie. picture to have been a part of a wonderful director, super Gary Cooper. Gary a Cooper. Lovely, lovely role. What kind, kind of man? What kind of man was Gary Cooper, Joan? I mean, well, it, gee, um, he's it's so presumptuous to ask me these things, but he's um, right. a gentleman, uh, a, 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 a gentle person, um, fun, natural, uh -huh. just didn't have a phony bone to his body, no uh -huh. affectation of any kind. He loved to hunt, to ride. He's a man's. He was a man's man, and um, uh, but a very good actor. He knew what he was doing all the time. Very all of these things that seem so casual and spontaneous uh -huh. were so much a part of his experience and background. He knew what he was doing all the time. And Humphrey Bogart, tell me, Humphrey Bogart. Oh well. I mean, that's the first. <laughs> the first day you did the film with him. I mean, was it? What kind? You know, you're just a little small little actress, and all of a sudden you got into this big movie yes. with. Great giant. Fifteen years old. Fifteen years old. Yes. How did you feel? He, he treated me um, as if I had been in the business uh, quite a while, uh -huh. and if he had a suggestion, he'd say, well, "Why don't you do it just like this, Joan? You know, like uh -huh. you know, that's where I came from." Yeah. Very casual. Didn't ever, uh, of course, uh, put me down. But uh, more than that, he made me feel wonderful and uh -huh. professional and equal to the situation, which was more than I could ever ask for. I was scared to death, of course. Mm -hmm. Until the camera rolls, then you forget those uh -huh. things. Uh -huh. 
because it's fun to act when everything is going right. It's fun. It is. It's the work, but it's fun. You just did a film now, a movie mm -hmm. of the week, mm -hmm. with Robert Conrad, mm -hmm. and I'm going to bring in two Hollywood comedies. You've been around Hollywood a long time. <laughs> yes, And these did. two gentlemen have been around Hollywood a long time, too. They grew mm -hmm. up here in Hollywood, mm -hmm. and I would like you to meet them. Oh, and this is the first time you've met them. And this Not Roger. A gentleman, ju uh, ro yes, Roger Bacon, who is James Bacon's son. I know. He is the producer of this new movie Yes, of so the I week. did meet him, and I yes, think he's a and, and, and the movie is called... Charlie Hanna. Charlie Hanna. Yes. With Robert mm -hmm. Conrad. Yes. And you're playing his mother. Yes. Ah, well, let's bring on Roger uh, Bacon yes. and Sheila Graham's son, who mm -hmm. just wrote a great book, and it's going to be a big hit. It's going to be fun. Town. It's called The Left-Handed Policeman. Uh -huh. His name is Robert Westbrook. Hello, Robert. Uh -huh. And hi, how are you? Oh, good. Hi. This is my actor. Hi, Roger. Ah. Hi, John. Hi, John. How are you? How are you? This is one of the grandest producers in the business, I want to tell you. I didn't the know friend. he was a producer. Oh, I sure, he's pr yeah. produced a Hannah thing. That was Charlie Hannah. Yes. Yeah. Well, can we, uh, I think you better do this. You better slip this in. How you doing, Robert? I'm fine. This yeah. book. Uh, I'm so glad God. to meet you, too. Nice to meet Sheila you. Graham's son, uh -huh. Robert Westbrook. Now, if anyone can really write about Beverly Hills. Well, I well, grew up there. Yes, indeed. That's right. Yes. So. Tell yes, me about this. Okay, well, uh, it is a, a novel that takes place in Beverly Hills. It is a mystery. Uh -huh. um, and uh, it's really a story uh -huh. uh, about Beverly Hills looked at from two different points of view. One of them is uh, a man who knows it very well, who is on the Beverly Hills police force and is uh, rather cynical about uh, Beverly Hills. And he is married to an actress. He knows it well. He is not impressed. The other person whose point of view you see is the villain who is... Uh, a man, an accountant who is dying of cancer, who is a nobody. And he it, watches television and has a glamorized picture of this world, and he uh -huh. wants to be part of it. And he only has a few weeks left to live, and he checks into the Beverly Hills Hotel and lives out his last fantasies. And he, he learns uh, that uh, the world he has imagined it does not quite exist. It, it is a fictitious world. Uh -huh. And. Uh, uh, so that's uh, that basically the story, and it, and it is a thriller. Yes. It is a thriller. It is a thriller. It's a thriller. It is. Yes, it has lots of action, and it is soon to be made into a movie by Warner Brothers. It's going to be Warner into a movie. Yes, it is. Yes, ah. we have a deal with them now. How mm -hmm. wonderful! Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Oh, and who's you. who's playing the? Well, you haven't we have not. Uh, we have just concluded the deal, and so I at see. this point, that that'd be presumptuous to, to I say. I see. I see. Yes. But you live in San Francisco. Um, actually, for the last two years, I've been living in Hawaii. Hawaii. I, I have lived. Uh, I am one of the, the Hollywood children who left uh, as almost as soon as I could, really. I uh -huh. wanted to see the world. I lived in New York, uh, in, in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, and, th and then uh, right. the last 10 years before Hawaii, I, I was up in the San Francisco area. Yes, I see. Uh, yes. But this is the first time you two met? Yes, indeed. Yes. Really? <laughs> two, the famous columnists of sons. <laughs> really? I can't <laughs> tell me. I just had your dad on the show last couple weeks ago, uh -huh. and he was just wonderful with Aldo right. Ray. Right. Tell me about yourself. Well, I'm one of the Hollywood children that did not leave. <laughs> yes. And uh, so, and I've been here all along through all the wars, and I've just as recently produced a movie called Charlie Hanna, starring uh -huh. Joan Leslie. But you two gentlemen have grown up with great movie stars like Clark Gable, Marilyn Monroe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, Joan Leslie and all these people. You must have met them all. They all must have been to your homes. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you a funny story is that the people, you know, the Academy Awards is a big, you know, a big party, and everybody likes to go to the Academy Awards. And I always remember that when I first got my driver's license when uh -huh. I was 16 years old, uh, my father would always go to the Academy Awards early, and it was my job to take my mother. And I used to say, oh, no. <laughs> I, mean, gee, I mean, I want to go uh -huh. and do something. I got my driver's license right, now. Right, I got a car, right, and I right. got to spend the whole evening going to the Academy uh -huh. Awards. And, it, you know, to this day, I mean, I tell people that story, and they say, God, I mean, you know, that's uh -huh. incredible. It's really yeah. important. Well, I think you take it for granted a little bit. I, mean, I know when I was uh, a Boy Scout in Beverly Hills, Glenn Ford was the, was the Scoutmaster. Right. And you just sort of take it for granted. I mean, I've told people, especially since I've lived outside of Hollywood, you know, I say, well, when I was a Boy Scout, Glenn Ford, you know, taught me how to tie knots, and we went on camping trips where uh -huh. uh, they set up a movie, th you know, a, a screen in the middle of, uh, uh, you know, the mountains and showed uh -huh. us movies at night. Uh -huh. uh, and this, uh -huh. but, you know, as a kid, you kind of take it for granted this as well, you know. You this is what you Are know. Are you one of the Beverly Hills highs? No. You're, you no, I right? left. I went to the Hawthorne School which Hawthorne. Is in, in uh, Beverly Hills, but then I, I went east to high school. My mother was actually quite concerned 
uh, that I see the real world outside of Hollywood, and I went to a prep school uh, in Vermont. And, uh, Sheila uh, Graham, tell yeah. me about Sheila Graham. I mean, your mother well, was, a, you know, one of one of the Hollywood's great columnists, mm -hmm. and James Bacon too. But mm -hmm. uh, she, but James is not a gossip columnist. Sheila, right. it, it, see, that's a difference. Am I correct? Uh, right. Yes, it's a slight difference I mean, of a approach. Difference. Definitely. Sheila yeah. Graham was a great. Hollywood gossip column. Mm -hmm. Very Tell me bright about lady. Very she, bright. Did uh, she you meet is. her, uh, Joan? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've met her many oh, times. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. indeed. Uh -huh. Yes, well, she still has tons of energy and uh, is writing uh, a new book, actually. And uh -huh. she's just, uh, I mean, I really admire my mother a lot. She grew up in, in a sort of a disadvantageous situation in London. She was very poor, uh, had no education. And uh, you know, with just a lot of guts, she came to this country. Self-educated? Uh, well, she was very fortunate. Uh, when she first came to Hollywood, uh, she uh, became friends with F. Scott Fitzgerald. Exactly. And, and he uh, completed her education uh, in, in a rather formal way. Set her out books. They were to very read close, and they not were very just friends. Uh, they were, yes, just more not than friends. friends. Yes, Let's get that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we must get that clear. Right. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Go yeah. ahead, Rob. And uh, so she did get an education, probably the best way possible, by someone who really loved. Uh, literature and uh -huh. art, and uh, was able to share these experiences in a way that you don't get in college, alas. Yes, uh, yes. And so, uh, but she certainly had a lot of energy to go for the things that she wanted to. to she had to good do. taste. And good taste. Yes, yes. she did. She mm -hmm. really did have good taste. I met her a couple uh -huh. times. I met your mother a couple times. Uh -huh. James Bacon, I think he had some great stories to tell me about Marilyn Monroe, Clark Gable, oh, James he had them all. I know my Dean. James Dean, now, everybody. You, did you ever meet James Dean? Or, or I never met James Dean. You were uh, no, but I remember you know people like Marilyn Monroe calling the house and and uh, Howard Hughes uh -huh. uh, because you know my father was very close with Howard Hughes. He always tells us stories about how uh, everybody you know everybody liked to go to Chasen's for dinner. Yes. Well, Howard Hughes liked Chasen's also, but Howard Hughes never liked to eat mm -hmm. outside. So go every in the time kitchen. Go in the kitchen, and my mm -hmm. father used to always have to meet Howard in the kitchen, sit mm -hmm. on a stool, mm -hmm. and have dinner, and then after that it was over, and he always talks about the one great time that Howard said, uh, you want a great burger? I mean, you really want a great hamburger? And my dad says, well, yeah. So they drove to Santa Monica Airport, and Howard got in and piloted a uh, twin-engine DC-3 over to some place in Arizona that he thought had great burgers. <laughs> <laughs> I love <laughs> it. <laughs> no, that was it. So. <laughs> and as you know, my father's still very active, as you uh -huh. know, and he... Oh, yeah. I mean, he's all over the world all the time. Now, Roger Bacon, why did I thought you that you handled people? Movie, uh, like, um, what's his name? Uh, Dennis Coe. I thought you oh, I managed Yeah, I worked uh, in management and uh, publicity oh, for a I while. Oh, you did? And then uh, I was with Robert Conrad for a number of years. Uh -huh. And then we came across uh, this script. So you produced it. I produced it, uh -huh. and I must tell you a great story. Uh, there was, it was probably the easiest casting in the history of television. There was a, we decided, we said, well, we, in the script, there was uh, somebody who played Bob Conrad's mother. Yes. And it had to be a, a certain type. And Bob Conrad, who was a big fan of all the pictures you mentioned, plus mm -hmm. High Sierra with Humphrey Bogart right. and the whole thing. <laughs> and he said, Joan Leslie. Yes. That was it. We went to the network and we said, Joan Leslie. And she's she a is. lady. And that's <laughs> why. She's a lovely lady. Oh, she's she's a always really been a lady and she's a we lovely. We were down in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, shooting the uh, the pilot, uh -huh. and we were there for about mm -hmm. uh, four weeks, and Joan was just marvelous, and she's just marvelous in the movie also. She, mm -hmm. that's good. thanks, the Roger. That's that's nice. It's a really family feeling on that set. Yeah, it is. You know, was uh, it fun? two of Bob's yeah. own boys we're play in. parts, good parts, uh -huh. in the picture, and they're. That's going to be very intriguing for people. Yeah, that's it's great. There, it was quite a, a production uh -huh. job. There was an awful lot. W the whole thing was on location, uh -huh. you uh -huh. see. So, uh, well, it's it's a, there are demands on you as a producer yes. <laughs> that are quite uh, yes, extensive, more than shooting here on a lot, you know. Yeah. And I think it just came out. 
Maxwell. Did you know that Robert Westbrook was the page? Weren't you a page? I, was a page. I want to know, Johnny Carson. Oh, right, yes. You I, were. I worked at, at NBC uh, Tell me when, about when that. I was 18. It was quite uh -huh. a while ago. I and, think it's great. And, and this is in New York, in Rockefeller Center. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. uh, the traditional way to sort of work your way up the ladder at NBC uh, is to start out as a page. And you seat people for all the shows. Celebrities. Uh, you, did, you did the celebrities. Uh, no, well, I mean, I did everything. Well, we, did. we did everything from being downstairs in the lobby, getting tourists, I mean, upstairs into the game shows, uh -huh. uh, to yeah. seating people for the Johnny Carson show and uh, dealing with all the celebrities that came on and off, and right. little problems that would come up. For example, uh, Cassius Clay, as he was called in those days, was, uh, was a guest on Johnny's show. Uh -huh. And uh, he started playing the piano out in the lobby, uh, out in the, uh, the hallway, actually, uh -huh. while the show was being, uh -huh. you know, going live. Uh -huh. And uh, someone said to me, he said, go tell that guy to stop playing the piano. And here was, you know, the heavyweight champion yeah, of the right. world, and I was an 18-year-old <laughs> page, and I had to go, and uh, uh, Mr. Clay, you know, would you uh -huh. please uh, stop playing the piano? They can hear it on the, on the set. And actually, he was, he was very charming, and I immediately stopped. But uh -huh. this is the kind of thing we did. And of course, we had strict orders never to speak with Johnny Carson directly. He was, uh, really, you know, he was kind of the god of NBC, and I see. It, it, it probably, of course, still is. But May I say something? Uh -huh. You play in the band. You played in a band. I am a. Are uh, you a musician too? Do you no, do anything like that? <laughs> he does. Uh, he's a man of all no, trades. I cannot sing. I cannot play. You can't. Well, Tell me, Robert. Yes. Okay. After my first, my first novel was *The Magic Garden of Stanley Sweetheart*. It was made into a movie uh, starring Don Johnson. We actually discovered Don Johnson. That was Johnson. your first. That was my first novel when oh. I was 23. Now, uh, I was a bit disappointed in the way the b the book was made into a movie, and I I decided to flee Hollywood. I became this is 1969. I sort of became a hippie, moved up to the to the woods. Became a hippie. What do you mean by that? Well, I wanted to, you know. to drop out. <laughs> Of uh, and find a better life. Find okay. find myself, as the saying went in those days. San Francisco. Uh, San Francisco, right? Okay. And uh, and so I left writing behind, and I got into music, which was of course a very you know, attractive uh, uh -huh. thing for a young man. And and I uh, play keyboards and uh, you know, mostly jazz piano. Uh -huh. And uh, I I was doing that. I went to Hawaii actually to join a top forty band. I was playing synthesizer, and I <laughs> finally realized I'd kind of had enough. I mean, in, in the back of my mind, I always felt one day I'm going to get back into writing. Uh -huh. um, I stopped it at 23 partly because I felt well at that age you don't have that much to write about. I mean, I I wrote my one autobiographical biographical novel, uh -huh. and you know it was time to sort of go on living and do some things. Uh -huh. And uh, and now I am 40, and I've kind of done a lot of things, and it was seemed appropriate to kind of sit down and start writing again. Sheila Graham, anything you remember, some incidents around the house, some stars to come, anything that you... Uh, well, anything it's funny, uh, you, you mentioned Howard Hughes. I think, you know, Howard Hughes uh, courted all, all the columnists, and he was actually a friend of my mother's, too, uh -huh. and had strange rendezvous. He would call up our house and, and ask if my mother was alone, uh, and then say... Um, I will meet you. Uh, my car will be outside at two o'clock in the morning. Uh, I have an important story for you, and uh, he would come by. You know, but make sure there is no one with you. I mean, there'd be all these incredible precautions taken, and then, you know, um, my mother would say, "Okay, yes, yes," and she'd be outside at two o'clock in the morning. They'd, they'd drive around the block in this limousine uh, to make sure they weren't being bugged or anything, and tell her, you know. Some anecdote about where did she get? Uh, where did she get all her gossip? Well, I mean, people called her on the phone at night at three in the morning, uh, saying they saw them at. Le pardon? Well, a lot of you but know publicists would feed her information, but generally my mother and, and uh, probably your father. I mean, the, the good same journalists that, the same go thing? after stories. I mean, it, you have mm -hmm. to. You can't really rely on the publicists because the generally they, they'll feed you the, the more watered down versions, yes. the, the polite. But not version. your mother's story. But the stories yeah. that your mother would do uh -huh. would, wouldn't get really from the publicists. They would get it from. She the bartenders, call. waiters, oh, and, yeah. uh, you know, those are gossip. Uh -huh. Your mother's after gossip, you know. Yeah, no, she would call the people themselves. Uh, she had no uh, she uh, fear. Made friends. Uh, she yes. made friends, too. Yes. Uh, and that yes. was yes. Yes. Actually, yes. I'm glad you yes. said that, because yes. that's the main friends. thing, yeah. the network. Make friends. And yeah. you make friends partly yeah. by not telling the whole truth sometimes. I mean, a lot of people would say, uh, look, mm -hmm. this is what really happened. Uh, we can't say this right now, especially in the 50s when morals, uh, the standards, uh, you know, a lot of people had to hide. they were really doing, people who were living together. Yes. I mean, the whole, you know, life was not really Ozzie and Harriet. That you know, is where, yes. you know, yeah. in the business, when, when a, uh, a person would say, you know, like to uh, his mother and my father, that, can I tell you something, trick, you know, off the record, 
Right. And they keep it off the record, and they, you know, they gain a confidence, and then and you know, that's it. Uh, yeah. Then nobody knows where that information comes from. Ah, I see. Well, then well, you don't, you don't, you have you to don't be discreet. You yeah. don't use it, and and hope uh, okay. the next time you can use a little bit more. Now, a lot of uh, uh, you know events that happened have not been you know talked about. I mean, they, oh. they sort of come out years later in people's memoirs what what right. really happened. But <laughs> Joan, how do you feel when you see something in the gossip? Co I mean, naturally, you're a lady, and uh, you're. A a wonderful actress. I'm sure there's never a, a gossip about you, but sometimes we you can't handle that. I mean, how do you feel about certain stars who can't handle that? What? Do, how do they feel well, about that? What, do they just feel uh, for them because there are some dreadful stories that are released without a grain of truth to them. An That's awful it. lot yes. of the time, like you see mm -hmm. it in the market, you see it That's on the true. stands all yes. the time. Yes. But you have to remember. There are thousands of people who make their living in Los Angeles writing about nothing but our industry, and if there isn't enough going on, they've got to make it up. Well, you know You've got to believe that. I see. Mm -hmm. Well, there's one thing that's uh, different now than it used to be. It used to be that the stars were more uh, open and more accessible to the press, and now there's so many of the stars that are uh, sort of reclusive, and uh -huh. you yeah. know the people Just have to make up stuff. Yeah. That's yeah. true. true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to know. This is this is out at Crown. Crown, Crown is releasing this book. Crown is the publisher. Yes, uh -huh. and the book is in the stores now. Left-handed uh -huh. policeman. I think it's. <laughs> I read it. It's wonderful. Well, thank Just you. Just finished it last night. Oh, good. I it enjoy this kind of genre myself. Oh, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. You've got to read this, Joan. It's, it's just, it, it's a real okay. good book. It's, I, and I really wish you a lot of luck well, thank up you this very much. Good. Uh -huh. it, it's it's going to be good very job. successful. And I don't know who's going to do it. I have an idea, but I won't tell you who should do it. <laughs> 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 who should do it? <laughs> hey, tell me something. Now, this thing, after what's happening uh, after this? Uh, what's your next project? Uh, we have another uh, project for ABC that uh, we're going to do. And uh, it's called The Glory Days, starring Robert Conrad. But after April 5th, when Charlie Hanna airs, uh, and it goes to a television series. Oh, it's going into a series? Yes, it is. And uh, oh. it'll be with uh, Joan Leslie and Bob Conrad and Red West. Joan is going to be in a television series. I'm How marvelous. Just thrilled to pieces. They would love you. Uh, that's it's a wonderful company. You just don't know. We have uh, Joan Conrad, who is Bob's daughter, is the exec right. producer. Right. Nancy Conrad as an associate producer. Christy Conrad as a uh, still photographer. Uh -huh. uh, family. Shane Conrad is stars <laughs> in the film. Christian Conrad stars in the film. Robert Conrad and Joan and I are the only non-Conrads that are. <laughs> 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 Tell me something. Does Robert Conrad ha have any other hobbies? <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> Joan, I'm so pleased for you, and that's, you haven't done a film in a long time. This is your first film in a long time. No, I've done a few spots on television, spots, but not yes, a but real a film a like film, this. Yeah. Not, a good, not as good a role. Uh-huh. Uh, I good. love working with a company of this caliber. Tell me about the young actresses today. I mean, uh, Geraldine, page one. I'm so thrilled about that. Yes. And so I deserving, said, yes. Deserving, superb, yes. And Don I was so pleased. Yes. Very, very pleased. Weren't those nice? Yeah. Yes, and I was very pleased. But tell me about the young actors. Do we have any? Oh, I'm, I'm not in a position to tell you. Yes, I think you that really some did. of them are just outstanding, and they have marvelous training, and that's why they are rising up to become stars. If they don't have it, they're not going to survive nowadays. You've got to deliver. Mm -hmm. Television is very demanding. It is demanding. Oh, it's very. 